thank you for showing up for my talk. Um, I realize that uh, build tooling is always going to be annoying, so that's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my aim low and just making it suck a little less rather than actually making it fun. So I do believe that's probably impossible. Um, also, I'm sorry that it's at the end of the evening because you're probably already willing to go to sleep, so now I'm going to talk to you about how to build software, so <laughs> it's probably not going to help. But I'm going to try to make it somewhat entertaining at least. Right. So um, what do we actually trying to s what are we, what I'm actually trying to solve here? So currently setting up Godot build system is kind of difficult if you want to actually do a release on any other platform than a platform you're currently running on, particularly if you're unlucky enough not to be running Linux as your primary platform. So um, users, particularly for mobile, often need to patch. Uh, Godot in some way, adding a module, add mob, a Firebase, something like that, and then they need to be able to rebuild it. And this is when things get even more difficult if you're unfortunate enough not to be using Linux. Mm -hmm. um, and um, oftentimes, if you're developing your game, you want to place it on Steam, you still want to be able to like ship it for Windows, Linux, Mac, and not have to become a build system expert to figure out how to do that. right? Um, and exactly, cross-compiling for Windows uh, on Windows and Mac OS is really not the easiest thing in the world to get going. So what are we uh, doing to make this easier? So we've built a whole bunch of containers and the source code for these containers is available on the uh, Godot uh, GitHub site now, which allows you to build for all of these platforms using these containers. So the only thing you theoretically have to do is download these containers and use them to build your build with. Uh, let me quickly show you where those live. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use them in a moment. So we have, um, uh, wait, no. I know how to use a computer, really. <laughs> uh, there we go, build containers. So here you can see the sources for all of the build containers we have right now. You see they've actually been up for a little while already now. So these different build containers, uh, uh, when you build them, will, pr will provide you with build environments for all of these platforms. So in this case, Android, iOS, JavaScript, Mono, Microsoft Visual, C, OS X, Ubuntu, Windows, and Xcode. Um, how these work exactly, there is a build script here that you can run on a system that has Docker or Podman installed and it'll <coughs> guide you through how to build all of them. Um, you can also download most of these except for the ones that uh, we can't legally distribute. So uh, Mac OS, Android and iOS, uh, you will have to build those containers yourself because we are not allowed to modify the installers and give you a package version. But we are, we are allowed to give you these Docker files which should let you do it with just a little bit of time. Um, so let me shortly show you uh, a way in which you can use them. So um, I've uh, pre prepared this little shell script. Um, and what this shell script will do is this will actually uh, start a container and build a Godot for iOS on my Linux laptop here. I'm just going to run it as root because of the way my system is set up, but that is not normally required. If I type my password incorrectly, which I did not do. God damn it. Hmm? No. <laughs> so once you type it in wrong, yeah, okay, there we go. So this is all you need to do. And now you see that we're actually building uh, iOS MM files and CPP files uh, for, um, you see here, our uh, cross things. Now this is pretty nice, I think. Um, but seeing a Linux system run Linux software is probably somewhat under underwhelming when it comes to like the, <laughs> the level of uh, impressed you should be by this. So here's something else I've prepared. This is a Windows, uh, a Windows 10 VM. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I can increase the text size on this. Does anyone actually use this? <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. 
go. 28? <laughs> well, it still did it, I guess. All right, so um, this is a Windows system that is running uh, the Docker Quick Start uh, shell that's uh, over here. I ran this and then you get this window. It takes a little while to start because my system is already virtualized or so running another VM in it. It's kind of slow, but this works. Uh, and now uh, I have a very similar script here, which uh, basically instead of the potman command you saw earlier, now this has the docker command here. And if I run this, now you see that we're actually building, once it actually gets going, Again, this is a little bit slow because we're now like three la layers of virtualization deep. On your, on your regular system, this will barely be any slower than running natively. Oh, there we go. And now you see here that we're building Godot iPhone using the same tool chain, uh, but now on the Windows system. So you can do this on your own Windows system as well. All right. Let me go back here. So um, what you see, what you saw just now already works right now. You can do this right now to build Godot with all of your patches on any platform you want. But as you see, you still need to know a little bit about how uh, Docker or Podman works to make this work. And you need uh, a little bit of setup to actually get this to do. So uh, for that, I'm now working on a tool, uh, b working on a tool called Godot Build which uh, probably needs a better name. So if somebody has some suggestions, I think we discussed some, uh, I think what, what, was the, what was the current winning? Uh, uh, oh yeah, Vada. <laughs> 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 yeah, go to Bad. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, go, yeah, go don't build and deploy. Yeah, go bad, that go was bad. it, go bad, yeah. Go bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's currently written in Rust and it was works uh, and it currently supports building on Linux, Windows and Mac OS, but it's not done yet. But some part of it do work. So let me go back here and we have uh, here the command line help for the tool as it is right now. So what we can do here is um, build, uh, do a build. So let's see, um, we're gonna do uh, four jobs, uh, do a 64-bit uh, build, and uh, do hmm, Windows, and uh, the path will be uh, I'd have to run it as root again. This is not something you would normally have to do, and I hope I can type my password this time. God damn it. <laughs> There you go, and now you see that what this has done is this has set up, this, this has done the entire setup for you. So it already knows what the names of the containers are going to be. It will download containers if you're missing them, which I can't really demo because the internet here is shit, otherwise you could have seen it actually download the, 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 the dependencies. Um, but so now with only this little bit of command line, you're, uh, you're able to build for all the platforms. So I can just change this to Linux and now we're doing a Linux build with the exact same setup and with no setup required on your workstation to make this work. And the same for JavaScript. So now we're building a JavaScript uh, version. And you can see this is actually the case because there are different files being built here. See? So this is hopefully would make it a lot easier for uh, users uh, who are not willing or interested in becoming build system experts, which is probably nobody because it sucks, uh, <laughs> uh, to make it a little easier. So um, what do we want to do for the future? So one of the things I want to add is the ability to just clone the sources of Godot as well. So you just download one exe file and tell it, okay, give me your sources for Godot. So in case, you d so we can write very simple instructions for uh, possible modules that we don't want to ship or can't ship ourselves. So basically run this command, copy this folder into that folder and then run this command and then you will get Godot for all your platforms. Uh, that's kind of where we wanted to go here. Um, I also have some inspiration from talking to someone who uses the Unreal editor where apparently if you download Unreal 
there is also a very similar type of command, but this can also set up your IDE for you. So basically you download the, the, the Git repository, run a command, and you can then open the directory in, uh, in your IDE of choice, uh, and it's already all set up. Uh, another thing is what I wanted to do is add support for uh, Windows 10 Pro. So if you have Windows 10 Pro, you actually have a hypervisor built into your operating system, which is quite fast and requires no setup. Uh, and use, uh, be able to use that as well instead of having to install Docker. Although the new version of the tool will actually install Docker for you on Windows if you don't have it yet. And um, make it easy to also build GD native uh, plugins with it. So currently it's basically focused on building a Godot source tree. And it would, nice, it would be nice to be able to also build uh, plugins for Godot that you can load at runtime later. Um, guess that's it. So if anyone has any questions, then I will perhaps answer them. <laughs> Thank you. Fun? Yes. I thought the Android SDK was pretty much open source. You, you, you have to, uh, you have to uh, uh, agree to end user license agreements when oh you install them. Yeah, but th that's kind of, you can kind of get the bug by yourself as far as I understand and just build it. I mean, as far as I understand, oh, they call it public and you can install your version. Mm. Oh well, if that's possible, then we can probably yeah. ship the the Android build container as well. If we can find a way of installing it without having to agree to a license agreement, because otherwise, I feel like if we agree to the license agreement when building the container, I don't think we can just give it to someone else who then doesn't have to look at the license agreement. I don't think that. As far as I understand, it's just Java with uh, you can use OpenJDK and you can download the, the library. Okay, we'll shoot. I will. We'll look into that then, because that makes it a lot easier. Uh, so we can bypass the license. That's what the, that's what the build script that's does. What we yeah. Well, it's, it's something we can't ship like yeah, that. Yeah, because this is what it currently does to build to the container. So I'm not sure how readable oh, okay. this is. Yeah. So th this is something I don't want to ship when this is already run to a user. But we can ship this source, and one of the things that the tool also lets you do is uh, build the container, so you don't have to know how to do that either. So it will figure out you don't have the container yet, you're not logged into a container registry that does have the container, then it will download these sources from this repository and build a container for you locally. Okay. Yes. Um, depends on how you build it. If you build on a, uh, if you build on a, so d you can give the tool a tarball or a directory. If you give it a tarball, it is never incremental. Every time you run the build, it will untar the tarball, build it, give you the result, and destroy everything. If you give it a directory, then it's just like running scons in that directory. So it's just as incremental as scons is able to figure out, which is sometimes not very, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it, it tries its best. Yes. On yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So we can build for iOS and macOS from this tool, uh, and you can okay. deploy to macOS without using anything else either. But for iOS, if your phone is not jailbroken, you need to sign it with a Apple developer certificate. And that Apple developer certificate is always tied to an actual Mac. Um, so that step you will still need Xcode for. But this will let you, uh, if you have a CI system or something like that, 
make sure that you have one fast machine that you don't have to pay Apple for uh, to actually do the stuff that takes a long time, which is actually building all the native code. But to actually deploy to iOS or to the App Store, you will still need a Mac. No, you, you will, uh, what we spit out is an Xcode project uh, at the end of the export pipeline and that you can then have to then run through Xcode. Uh, you can do it from the command line, uh, but to sign it and upload it. Yeah, there's nothing much we can do about that. You, you're going to have to complain to Apple. This, this, this is just the best we can do. No. <laughs> Does it answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Well, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> No, the other way around. So if you're running on Windows and you're oh. using like Microsoft Visual Studio, then uh, mm. creating a uh, binary for window for Linux is kind of difficult. And creating one for macOS, I don't think there is really any support for that at all. And this makes it all very easy, because all of these all of these containers run on all of the platforms we support. So you can build all of these containers on any of the platforms. So that means you can use Microsoft Visual C on the Mac to build if you want. It's just, <laughs> for those who don't un understand, it's virtualized operating system. I mean, it's, just, it's not like it runs a post compiler, it's just virtualized with the whole system. <laughs> yeah, so like so like the 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 all those containers are Fedora, so it basically lets you run Fedora from any OS, and in this Fedora, everything is set up to build all the worlds, because on, on Linux, you can actually do that on other platforms. So we use mm. a Linux distro as a base for building for all platforms. Mm. Because I built a game, uh, well I was working on Linux mm. and building for Windows and even for Mac OS was no problem at all. So I think that since it's Fedora, it will work the same way if I work, if I will be working on Windows. But I, if it's a the case, then well, thank you for making sure. Thank okay. you for <laughs> but it's not about exporting the game, it's really about building mm. the mm. template. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All the templates, yeah. and eventually uh, you could say like you want to use the Steam library. It's not built in, so you have to make your own build for all the platforms you target. Okay. So with this tool, you could just run one command, and then you could build all your binaries with the Steam library. Yeah, you don't have to know how any of this works, which is the nice thing about it. Um, oh yeah, and if anyone wonders if this actually works, well, since Elf. Since Alpha 2, all of the official releases have been built with this, so it works pretty well. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm not yet sure what that would look like. So um, if you have ideas, then it can go faster. And otherwise, I'm going to have to figure out what it has to do first. Maybe we can use that as the first use case then to figure out how we need to set this up. to emulate the options that we have on Godot. So it might already kind of work, uh, but yeah, you need to define, okay, this is the standard, or you make it to do that, and then you still can also do it. Because eventually then the idea is to use this tool to build the Gini native plugins that are on the asset store, so you don't have to upload binaries anymore. Oh, that is uh, that has just enough just enough Linux in it and uh, and some working tools to run your uh, export pipeline for all the other platforms. So, for instance, uh, uh, we use it in CI uh, at the customer to whenever a commit is done to the Godot repository to the game repository, 
we spin up this export uh, thing and export to all the target platforms. So there's always a actual APK and EXE ready for uh, uh, for any commit on the repository. Yes. Um, so is th I think the question is, are we going to support using external IDEs for the Godot uh, editing a game specifically? Uh, well, in fact, uh, there was some discussion about that and it seems that we'll be doing the engineering work together and then we'll cross the engineering work. That's not the goal of this necessarily. Uh, the goal of this is to... Um, uh, the goal of this is specifically to rebuild the engine uh, uh, binaries. So uh, if you need plugins that, uh, that don't exist in our official binaries, uh, that, that's the main use case. Okay, so and is this engine right now in the configuration of the Apache Engine Heavy Core? Sorry, it could also be? From the game, I guess it's something right now that if it extends the Heavy, the Engine Heavy Core? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So Yes, that's that's the goal indeed. So that when you run this tool, you say, okay, I my favorite IDE is Eclipse CDT. You get Eclipse CDT project files. You open the project, and then you're just editing the engine. And uh, if you want to use Qt Creator, it should be as simple. So just one command line, make Qt Creator plugin, and it will set up all the compilers, all the other stuff. And ideally, use the tool itself to do the builds as well. So if you then in Qt Creator, you can just select, okay, build for Linux, and it will do the right thing, and build for Windows, do the right thing. Yeah. It, does, it does rely on Squans. So in, in the background, it still calls Squans, but in the, yeah. In a like yeah, yeah. But you don't have to care about that anymore. Okay. So it will do incrementals in that, in that configuration. So if you use it to develop the engine on in your own checkout, uh, it will um, uh, it will build incrementally every time, but if you use it to build releases of the engine, I would recommend you don't do that because doing a completely clean build is just a little safer uh, because Scons doesn't always generate all the uh, external files correctly uh, uh, on demand. So it is a little better to just have the when you're doing actual release binaries to just build from a clean source tree, but when you're developing, it's fine. Any other questions? I'm Tom. Okay. This is Dave. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I've been seeing that in your group, so it's way too long. Thank you. Well, the struggle is over, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it was over 19 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you.